Hey guys, welcome back to this Ohio farmhouse. I'm Jenna. We're continuing with part two of our series of preparing um, and becoming a little bit more self-sufficient. And so today I wanted to bring in Ben, my husband, and Chuck, my brother-in-law, and we're gonna be talking about some of the products and the things that we can do. And so I have a couple of questions that we're going to go through just answering some of those um, what ifs and how do we go about preparing we're going to share those with you today all right so when we started preparing and running through our list i think we asked each other some questions and the first one was how are we going to have clean drinking water well we both live, have wells at our property um so the problem with a well when if you have a power outage is getting the water up out of the well so we found a, I don't, I don't even remember the name, do you? Um, no, the Easy Pump or something like that. Uh, it's a hand pump that is a temporary, it's not really meant to be permanent, but um, you put it down in your well. If you do have the power outage, you can put it in the well and you can pump it by hand to get the water out. So, so that's what we came up with. Uh, we do have, and I think you do as well, we do have um, some water storage that you know, it's just in the basement type of thing, uh, just storing for if we can't pump immediately, um, we have some water. So what would that. somebody who lives in town do if they're on city water? I mean, you would have to store enough water for what you think you're going to intake if the city water shut down. Because yeah. there's no other, you can't pull city water out of the pipes when there's no water there Yeah. pull out, no pressure. I think you'd have to prepare in advance to store water and then you'd have to have a plan for once you have no longer access to your city water how you would get water after that which would be probably like some sort of water purification like either a portable like a life straw type thing where you literally could go into like a city fountain or even a river you know, I mean some yeah, kind of no stagnant water. water you don't want to do stagnant water ideally because um, you can get like other bad stuff in there that's kind of funky um, but we have friends that have a swimming pool, and so they actually, I think, yeah. bought a filter system that will filter out all the chlorine. And You're really better off to get like a passive, like a gravity-based water filtration. You know, Berkey is a big name that's out there, but if you, you know, search around, there's a lot of ones that are like Berkey's, but they basically use like a ceramic, I think like a, I forget what they call them, like a column. It's like a cylinder, a cylinder. that goes in the center. Yeah. yeah, and you can reuse those cylinders, so. And there's different sizes that's really cost effective yeah okay we're also looking at rainwater storage especially a little bit less for our consumption but we have animals to take care of too that we're going to need water so having a some type of whether it's a ibc tote or something with you know a couple two three hundred gallons of water minimum okay. um for the animals that would be rain collection and I, and I don't know, I mean, you also have to think about how long you're preparing for. Are you talking like a week? Are you talking indefinitely? You know, there's two extremes. You know, I've even thought like figuring out what it would take to operate our well pump if we're going to shelter in place. And even if I had a, you know, a generator um, that would power that, I know, you know, you're going to, you can run out of fuel and so forth. But it's like, if I was really, you know, careful about when I ran that, you know, if I, if my well pump, if I could pump like, you know, t 10, 12 plus gallons a minute, I might only need to fire my generator up once a week for like 10 minutes and I could fill like, you know, or five minutes and just run, fill like a 50 gallon drum with well water and then just work off of that. And that could probably last me, right. you know, quite a while that way too. Okay. So the things that you would need then are the filtration, a pump yeah. and something to store it in potentially you're going to get a big source of water yep. okay. okay i think the next question in my mind at least was how are we going to stay warm because we're in ohio and i like my house toasty <laughs> and i know that that's not realistic to be as warm as what i like it to be but we do have kids to keep warm and so it needs to be somewhat you know above freezing so that we're oh well, you, yeah you don't want one for your comfort but you got to keep your water from freezing and otherwise it, you can't really use it okay so what are we going to do to keep our house warm uh well we we are ready to firewood um we have an outdoor boiler 
but those the boiler has pumps that require electricity um, we do have a wood burning fireplace not quite as efficient but um, the wood that we use for the outdoor burner might take a little bit more work to make it small enough but we can utilize that for the fireplace um, so it's kind of dual purpose but so okay. we, we keep a pretty ready supply normally of firewood almost all the time okay so chuck you don't have a fireplace in your house right so we, what we are have you gonna a, do we have an outdoor wood boiler also um so my thinking is kind of twofold one is um we just finished doing a remodel or it's partially done of an old sunroom on our house it's like 10 by 15 um but with my size family we could easily go into that room it's all insulated now um, and it's a nice real comfortable place and the previous owners had a wood burning stove in there but it, it was not a very good stove it's not a functional stove um, so my one plan ideally is to get a wood burning stove that's in there that's something that we can afford um, and if we had to for like a long period of time if I didn't if that was my only heat source we could all just kind of live in that room cook off that stove sleep in there um, the other thing I've thought about is trying to price what a like some sort of a solar or off-grid system would be just to power our outdoor boiler because that's the most efficient because it runs through our furnace Benz is on a radiant floor system and really there's just like some you know fairly low power consumption as far as like a, a circulation pump and then like in my case it would be the fan on the furnace and so you know if I could do some calculations and just say what would be the smallest you know maybe a solar or a combination wind and solar off-grid type system just for that that's what i would prefer because it's everything it's efficient, is set up yeah and yeah. i can heat my whole house so well so that leads me to my next question then is how do we keep things running and so i think one of the things that we're we've been doing is um, trying to store up extra fuel and propane and things to have on hand well and even just little things like making sure your vehicles when you're driving really trying to not get below half a tank so you always have yeah. half a tank of fuel in the vehicle where if you needed to you could siphon that out and you know most vehicles are going to have you know well our vehicles are bigger vehicles so we normally have <laughs> at least 10 or 15 gallons of fuel you know in the in the tank of those our vehicles so i think um, one of the things people don't realize um they think i've got a generator i'm I'm good, like I can keep things running, but can you explain what you have told me about generators and how long they actually will run for and what you can power with them because it's not going <laughs> to be as much as you think or hope for. Well, we've looked at pricing generators like for whole house generators to replace, basically replace the grid um, and just run the whole house if we really needed to. Um, now that would be a luxury, obviously, but just to run numbers on it, I wanted to see. And the the generator itself, you were looking around eight thousand dollars to purchase it, um, and then you have to have a fuel supply for it. So, uh, like here, we would run off of propane. So a five hundred gallon tank of propane really actually wouldn't even be big enough to to run the generator because the generator will suck the propane so fast that it'll freeze the tank. So you really would need to run a whole house generator for our house, you would need at least a thousand gallon propane tank. And even that wouldn't really last that long when you really do the math. Um, if it's if it's using yeah. it up, you know, I think I had figured, I think I had figured it might get run in the whole house. You, you know, you might get four or five days on what our current electric usage is. Now, obviously, you're going to try to minimize that if you get into an emergency situation. You're going to try to minimize yeah. what you power. But, um, you know, when you look at the the comfort, I guess, versus sur survivability, yeah, yeah. Ne necessity, it's going to change drastically. Um, but, yeah, realistically, you know, it's it takes a lot to run these generators for fuel. Um, and like Chuck yeah. said, you can cycle them on and off, which would help a lot. But eventually, if there's nothing bringing fuel in to the property, you're, you're kind of, the generator is 
really no Short better term than solution. Yeah. Know, yeah, it's kind of a giant paperweight at that point. <laughs> I think our our approach at our house is kind of like I've told everybody we're just going to live like pioneers. Like really just go primitive. <laughs> yeah. Because those are the people that lived and they had systems in place and a lifestyle where they could cook and, you know, sleep and operate day to day um, without electricity at all. So I'm like kerosene lamps or paraffin oil lamps. I had a thought the other day. I actually <laughs> I actually went and picked up a whole bunch of solar lights because I thought it's something that would last, I think, for quite some time. That Good you idea. could put it outside and then bring those indoors um, at night when you need them. Yeah. Because a candle's going to burn out. I mean, it only lasts for so many hours and you're going to run out of paraffin oil. So I was like, I'm going. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of solar lights and I think that they'll light up more than like a candle would or something so yeah. also pretty inexpensive um, yeah you can pick them up I mean even at like the Dollar Tree or whatever you can buy a whole collection of them you're so. welcome Dollar Tree <laughs> right. all right one of my next questions was how are we going to cook we can next week we're going to talk to you about actual food storage and how to prepare for that but how do you cook it if you don't have electricity um, what's your plan for cooking I'll jump in first this time. So at our place, <clears throat> I've kind of thought about it twofold that, um, you know, if we're going to stay in place and shelter in place for a long time, my ideal is I really want to get a wood burning stove, you know, with a, a cook surface on the top that's flat and I can, you know, obviously generate enough heat. You have to get a stove that's kind of able to do this, but you can at least boil water, you know, so I can use a Dutch oven. I can do whatever and cook on that. If that is not likely, then what I've done is I've I just got some normal things. I didn't do any crazy prepper stuff. <laughs> I've, I've got like a Weber, an old-fashioned Weber kettle grill. And it's like, yeah, I can use charcoal with that, but I could also, you know, put very small twigs, pine cones, whatever materials I've got, and make a fire, um, and I can cook on that. And if I ever had to leave, I can take that with me. Um, I've also bought like a small Weber tailgate size little propane grill. You know, it's yep. just a family of four for us, so I've got the smallest one. I think it's called a Weber Q, and there's different sizes, but it runs on like the little one, one pound tanks of propane. Um, you know, and I can run, take that with me and just use the propane in a pinch. Like I thought if I ever had a situation where, you know, I didn't have dry wood, uh, it was raining or, you know, whatever situation, yeah. you, you're really hungry and um, you're cold and you, and you gotta get a fire going really quick. And you're like, man, forget that. I can just use this in a jiffy and get it fired up. Um, same thing, I've got like uh, one of those outdoor burners where you can like, you know, do a, a, a boil water on it. Like we use it for canning. Yeah. Runs off a 20, 20 pound, is that right? 20 pound propane tanks. Um, you know, again, that's still like short term, but you know, if you watch what you're cooking or you cook in batches, like even though you might burn through some propane, if you're smart about what you're cooking, I could cook like a pretty good amount of food. Right. Um, you know, if it's cold out, I could keep it cold, keep it preserved or whatever. Um, and I thought you can also use that, like you can boil water if you had to, you know, keep it clean and stuff like that. I think the only thing I would add to that, ours um, being a little bit different, we have the indoor fireplace. And so I wanna, we're gonna get one of those, um, it's like a cast iron grate type of a thing with legs. Um, so that we can actually set that in there, build the fire underneath of it, and you can just set pots and pans and things right on top of that in the fireplace. One other thing I would add is that, actually Joanna just told me about this, but if you invest in um, like, de or not dehydrated, well dehydrated or freeze dried food, um, pretty much all of that stuff, you just cook it with boiling water. And so as long as you've got something that can boil water, you're gonna be good to go with your freeze dried stuff, um, and so one of the things that I didn't know about, but you can actually get these, I forget what it's called, like a, it's like a solar it's cooking It's a solar tube. kettle. A solar kettle. I think is what they call it, And you it, just yeah. put water in it and it's got flaps that open up. And I think if you've got good sunlight, I think it said like in an hour, it can actually boil the water or something like that. So that would be a good investment, yeah. whether you're staying at home or you're on the go, as long as you got freeze dried food, so. Well, the other thing I too, I also found at an auction, they were, like four or five bucks a piece, they were pretty cheap, it was like a two burner camping stove, like a Coleman camping stove. So, um, and then I picked up, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 gallons of the 
the fuel for that. So yep. just so, you know, I, I think I think the biggest thing is try to have multiple options yep. so you're not relying on just one option because if that something happens with that option, then I always have a yeah, backup. You're, you're going to have trouble. I mean, if you're like in the city, like even in a suburban neighborhood, I mean, how many people have a backyard fire pit? A lot right. of people. Don't think about it just as a fire pit. You know, for a small investment, you can get like a grate yeah. that will go right over your fire pit. And now you can actually cook food, get some cast iron cookware that's durable um, and heats evenly over, you know, a fire like that. And you can And that's turn fun until pit. like February in Ohio. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yep. A little wind. Nobody ever said survival was fun. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no, it's not. So one of the next questions that I asked was, what kind of products do we need to buy to have on hand in case we aren't able to get them eventually? And so we sat down and made lists. <laughs> and then we got those things and then we made more lists. <laughs> and I feel like we keep doing this, um, trying to be as thorough as we possibly can but what are some of the things that we thought were important to buy extra of or to have on hand well i thought um like things in the tool nature um you know if i'm going to be using an axe quite, you know quite often for firewood and stuff you know it'd be a good idea to have an extra axe handle or two or three um just because if you break it, it makes it a whole lot harder to try and make your firewood. Um, <laughs> Broken axe. <laughs> as you can watch on one of our previous videos where Chuck revamps one of his old axes. Yeah. But, yep. um, nice plug, Ben. Yeah. Uh, you know, ex for the chainsaws, while we had, you know, have fuel, um, extra chains, uh, a couple extra bars, extra bar oil, that kind of stuff. Um, speaking of oil, uh, things for your car um, or a vehicle, a mode of trans transportation, you know, maybe some extra oil, some spark plugs or um, little things that just your, your, you know, you, you can't prepare probably for every little thing that's going to break on your car, but um, just some of your small stuff that would be easily yeah. repairable. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know what else you had thought about when we started thinking about this stuff. I mean, I guess in general, you know, you don't have an unlimited budget. At least I don't, we don't. Maybe <laughs> Elon Musk, if you're watching, you might not have to worry about this because you'll be on Mars anyway. But uh, I guess I would sum it up like anything that is a critical component, like what are the most critical things that if that one thing was gone and you couldn't replace it, it would shut it down. So like, hey, I'm great. I got two chainsaws and I've got gas and some stuff, but like, oh crap, I don't have a spark plug. The whole thing is worthless without a spark plug or the whole thing shot because I've only got one chain. So whatever, like, kind of go through your your plan for, and yeah. whatever that is. For me, that's that. canning lids because exactly. we grow a lot of food. And if I didn't have canning lids, that shuts down a whole big production. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. And I would also preface this or just put out there, like, <laughs> don't be one of the people that, like, binges everything and you're, like, <laughs> goes to, like, Meyer or Tractor Supply and buys, like, every lid so nobody else has got anything. Like, be reasonable. <laughs> like, you don't need to have enough right. for like 10 families like we're all trying to be sustainable for our family one of the and things and instead of relying on that i'm going to invest in getting reusable lids so good point yeah so then i can just over and over again use those but yeah all right thanks for watching we hope that you got some helpful tips and got you thinking about some things um, we will see you next week and we will be sharing a video with you on food storage and all of the ways that you can store up enough food for your family. So we will see you next week on this Ohio Farmhouse. Thanks for watching.